videographer and I just, I love to create things, whether it's routines, uh, artwork, and photography, just any, any sort of those things. So I would definitely, first and foremost, just consider myself a creative. And again, professionally, lyric instructor here at the Moxie Movement and a freelance photographer and videographer. So uh, I guess I would love to start with favorite style of movement because I feel like that's what got me interested in dance, which would be contemporary. I love that contemporary has almost like no limits. It just it seems like a very free form kind of movement. And then when I came into aerial or you know started taking pole dancing and then eventually Lyra, Lyra became my favorite apparatus because here's something that still allows me kind of that like free form of movement, that ability to be creative, to be free, but also kind of gives me a little bit of structure to work off of. Sometimes I feel like I get really overwhelmed by the freedom that a lot of movement can allow you. I, I am personally not a really like a grounded dancer, so to be able to have something to hold on to makes me feel, I guess, even more free. Mm -hmm. That structure makes me feel free, mm -hmm. so. I at least want to give a little bit of backstory. So when I was 14, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and that kind of started this weird, almost like unhealthy journey with my body where there wasn't a lot of self-love, there wasn't a lot of just good choices that I was making to help keep myself healthy. So uh, around like 2014, I was invited to a pole dancing class by a friend and didn't really have any expectations, didn't expect to be good at it, didn't really know if I was going to be bad at it. I just thought it sounded like a fun idea. And then I took the class and realized, oh, I'm in love with this. I absolutely love this and I love how my body feels. I loved kind of like the, the healthy relationship I was starting to build with my body as I continued to take more classes. But once I started to fall in love with it, I kind of, you know, came back to that almost like unhealthy or that unhealthy view of myself and my body that came when I was diagnosed and thought, oh, but I'm not going to be able to do this for much longer, or I'm never going to look the same way that any of these other dancers do, or I'm never going to be able to move the same way any of these other dancers do. So I think that's a, that's a really big fear and insecurity is not being sure how much longer I can do this at the capacity that I'm doing it now. Um, definitely feeling kind of insecure about maybe the things that I may never be able to do because my body just isn't willing to push to that point. Dance is very hard on your body and my body is already really hard on itself and so like there's, there's definitely kind of that insecurity about it but at the same time that fear is pushing me to be a stronger aerialist, more in tune with myself aerialist. Um, again with the mind-body connection that we always talk about that is become so much more important to me and I I understand that connection so much more because before it just didn't make a lot of sense <laughs> until you until you find yourself like almost absent of it. Mm -hmm. So again those those fears and insecurities are always still there but I'm grateful for them too it's pushing me to be better and to take my time with things too. I rushed a lot because of that fear, so I actually listen to my body and you know, I, I have some off days, but this, I don't know, this is something that I want to do forever. So movement magic is a lot to me. It's <laughs> It's almost kind of, I would say hard to narrow down to a couple of things, but uh, I would say maybe like the journey, mm. the journey that movement can take you on. And that journey can look like so many different things. So for example, when I got started, this was definitely kind of, it was like my thing. This was my journey, my movement magic, and I was happy to just call it mine. <laughs> that, was, that was enough. But I think as everybody finds when they fall in love with something, you can't help but want to share it with other people. And you just, I, 
I don't want to say that I literally tried to just drag every single one of my loved ones into it. Like, this just like creature of the night that was like trying to me. But I totally did because I, again, I fell in love with it. And um, specifically when I started doing Lyra, I was like, everybody needs to do this. Everybody needs to feel as good as I do. Everybody needs to give this a chance. And one of those people was the one person that made it possible for me, which was my then boyfriend at the time, now husband, Matt. And Matt actually was the first person to like fully support this. You know, I was like, hey, so I've kind of taken up pole dancing. I really, really like it. What do you think? And he was like, oh, that's awesome. Do it, here, here's a gift. And he gave me like 10 classes and he was just, he was all in from the moment. And I I never asked for that and he, he just gave it. So it was kind of like, this, this idea that I was like, I have to pay him back for this because this has changed my life so much. So he eventually started coming to classes when I became an instructor in 2017. Um, he had kind of come to a couple pole classes then, but he was just like, this is fun, but I don't know, like, it's your thing, it's your thing. And then when he started taking um, the classes that I was teaching, I, I could kind of start to see this like, almost magic in him start to blossom. And it was really cool because then my movement magic became his movement magic. And we, like, almost in no time started doing it together. We started doing uh, duo Lyra. We started doing, um, like, duo partner acrobatics and that kind of thing. And it, like, fundamentally changed our relationship, which I think, again, that's just a, a part of this journey is it, it changed everything in this way where like him and I are really good about communicating, but when we danced, we were terrible. We were terrible <laughs> at communicating with each other. And so it kind of opened this new line of, well, how do we how do we talk to each other through movement? How do we how do we express to each other what our limits are, what our what our boundaries are when we want to do something specific, like how do we communicate that? Because this was an entirely different way of communicating and so that was pretty magical albeit difficult but like it was really cool to see you know somebody that at that point I had known for over six seven years become this totally different person I just really I really like seeing him grow into that person um, somebody that I never thought I'd get to meet, you know? And so, again, that's that's movement magic. The fact that it can, like, pull this, this special, like, version of somebody out. Mm -hmm. it, it's become such a huge part of our relationship, so much so that our first dance was an area <laughs> oh, I remember. So, <laughs> yeah, like, movement magic is, is the journey, the journey that I've got to, you know, take and the journey that I see my students and now my husband takes so wonderful. I like it. <laughs>
I want that to be enough. I want that to be okay. So yeah, I just I want some some peace and happiness in my journey. And of course, that pursuit of knowledge. I never want to stop learning. I always want to learn more for my students. I want to learn more for myself. And you know, with that, I that I guess happiness and that peace. I want to perform again. I haven't performed in a really long time because I've been so stressed and discontented with just my journey and kind of thinking like, well, I should be, I should be at a better place from here, but I'm exactly where I need to be. <laughs> and you know, this year aside, like I'm going to be exactly where I need to be in the next few years. As long as I always just remember that like, this is my journey and it gets to look however I want it to. And yeah, I think just peace, <laughs> peace in myself and Kind of maybe coming back to my roots as to why I started this in the first place. I think I got lost along the way. So taking myself back to my roots. And the roots were I felt so whole and happy when I started this. And I want to feel that again. So I think that's, that's kind of where I see myself. It's just kind of a journey of healing. <laughs> healing my journey. Mm -hmm. um, but... I feel like I have lots of other goals, but that's a fantastic place to just start. <laughs> awesome. So I would definitely say uh, if this is something that you've always thought about doing but have never, never taken that next step, you have, you know, a list of excuses, I'm not strong enough, I'm not flexible enough, like, just push that all aside and give it a try. The worst case scenario is Maybe it's just not for you, and that's okay, but like the, the things that you could miss out on if you didn't just give it a shot are so big. Like, again, I can't stress enough that this has changed my life. <laughs> I started Ariel, and now I don't know how to see my life without it. Like, it's, it's such a fixture in my life, and the, the people I've met through it, the experiences I've gotten through it, and the new, beautiful, unique relationship I have with my husband because of it. Like, I, I want everybody to experience something like that. So again, if you're on the fence about it, just do it. <laughs> like, it's, it's so worth it. Pole dancing is amazing. Lyra is the most amazing because <laughs> it is, but like silks, hammock, trapeze, there's so many cool things that you can partake of and again like you you will find what works best for you definitely don't don't let yourself not have this experience because it's, it's so worth it